you kind of never know what's going to happen when you ask kids to pray. <laughs> uh, but uh, I just loved it that after he finished, you heard this little whisper of, and also with you, it's just so good. Or, I, mean, was, I guess he said, may God be with you as you worship. It was, uh, it was just adorable. Um, all right. Well, it's good to see you all this morning. Uh, everybody doing okay? Yeah? It's a long week, maybe. Or stepping in, step to, stepping into a long week. It's, it's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Um, I want to take a moment and just, just take, like, pray for us. I mean, that sounds weird, but I just want to take a moment and pray for us. Let's, let's, would you pray with me? God, I lift up... Um, uh, God, we, we thank you that you're here. God, we thank you that you are, are present, um, that, you, that you see us. Um, just thinking about what Wendy was saying, you know, there's, even in our own lives, we can have highs and lows, um, good days and hard days. Uh, but no matter how the day goes, we, we can trust and we can know that you are with us. And so we thank you for that. We just, we just, we just say thanks. Here this morning, God, I ask that you would uh, speak to us. Uh, as we're here and we're trying to learn more about you, as we're seeking to worship you and to honor you and to lift you up, um, we want to be people who are uh, keen on um, seeing what you're doing in our midst. And you're always doing something in our midst. Um, Sometimes it's harder for us to notice, but I don't think that that has anything to do with you. I think it maybe has something to do with where our hearts are. And so today, in this moment, we uh, submit ourselves to you. We lift you up, and we want to have eyes that are open to seeing you here. We love you. Amen. So here we are. We're, we're in the, um, if you're just joining us this morning, this is the last Sunday of a series that we've done. This is week nine. Uh, we've been talking about through the Spirit. And um, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. And here we are today on self-control. I try and do that with my eyes closed to see if I can remember them all in order. Appreciate the help there, the assist. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, I think we have a, that verse up here. Do we have a slide for that? We have slides this morning? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, so I'm on Galatians 5. And um, it's, uh, I, I just, I really enjoyed this series. I feel like it has kind of helped us to understand each of these bits. Um, and, you know, kind of the big aim of this, is, you know, we're calling it cultivate because we want to, we recognize that, like, there's something that God is doing, right? Like, he wants to give us this, like, he wants to see our lives become more like him. Like, Jesus wants us, like, we want to be Christ followers, Christians, like, little, little Christ's. And um, in order for us to be able to do that, we have to see the Spirit working in our lives. And we have to be able to respond to that um, and, and work alongside with what the Spirit is doing in us so that we can be a part of what the Spirit wants to do through us. And um, last week, Wendy really teed up this, series, this Sunday really good, and I was thankful for that. I was writing things down as she was te- talking so I wouldn't forget it. Um, I should probably do that like every, every Sunday, no matter who's teaching. But um, <clears throat> it's a lesson there for all of us, even pastors sometimes. We should write things down. Um, but she, uh, Wendy, you know, she was talking about gentleness, and she pointed out two things that um, can get in the way of gentleness. And it's uh, passion and pride. These were the two things that she mentioned. And passion, she talked about it's getting um, swept up in a moment. You know, it's really easy to get kind of swept up in something, and then that causes your passion to just, you know, kind of go like this. Um, and sometimes that can get in the way of gentleness. And then the other thing was pride. Pride is where we think we know what's right. Uh, and, then some, and then sometimes that can turn into judging others because we think, well, they're wrong. If I'm right and they're on the opposite side of that, they're probably wrong. Um, and oftentimes alongside that, there can be a tone of harshness. And so sometimes that, that, too, can get in the way of gentleness. I'm not going to focus too much on these things because when you did that last week. But don't these also speak to self-control? Can we get caught up in a moment? And that um, can make us, uh, it could cause us to lose our sense of uh, purpose. Um, 
can cause us to indulge. Our passions can cause us to indulge sometimes. Or times when we think we uh, know what's right, uh, which can in turn uh, lead us to do what feels right, right? Uh, that's a phrase, you know, sometimes we joke around with, like, oh, just, I don't know what to do here. Like, just do what feels right. Um, that's not, just a heads up, that's not always the right way to do things. Um, sometimes it is because God, I, I believe that God has given us a gut, right? Like, he's given us this sort of gut feeling. Like, I think that that's God's spirit in us. I also think that sin can lead us to do what feels right, and sometimes that's not right. And so we have to be able to, we have to be people of discernment. Uh, that's what wisdom is, right, is, is, is having discernment and knowing what's my gut that God has given me and what is just, you know, something else in me that's like, oh, I'm just going to kind of do this and go for it. You know, there's a difference there. But both of these, I just thought it was such a great segue into talking about self-control. That's what we're talking about here this morning. Thinking about it, <clears throat> um, one way to describe the opposite of self-control is the word indulgence. And so that's a word that uh, I'm not going to like repeat on and on today, but I think just to kind of give us a point of like, all right, self-control, it's controlling ourselves. What is the opposite of that? It's just like, well, well, I'm just going to indulge and I'm going to dive in and I'm just going to get all I can get. Um, we give into indulgence when we feel like we can't wait any longer. Um, indulgence, it looks differently depending on the various circumstances. I think, you know, there can be different reasons why, in different scenarios, why we might indulge. Um, sometimes um, there's this inner talk that happens. Sometimes it's outer talk with the other people around us um, where we're kind of diving in, we're realizing that um, uh, we... We might shove off the idea of like being able to control ourselves or, or have a sense of like sticking with what our purpose might be. And we'll say things like, I just couldn't help myself. Or I had no other choice. Sometimes that might be true. I recognize that. Most of the time it's not. He, she, they, it made me do it. Um, that, that, that takes the control um, of what we do and it puts it in the hands of somebody else. Again, sometimes that could very well be true, but most of the time it's probably not. Uh, this, is, this is a good one here. It's just who I am, right? Uh, this is how I am. Uh, you just kind of got to be okay with it. And we, we, we um, <laughs> any fans of the Enneagram out here? I think it is a good thing. It is not the thing that should guide who you are completely in your life. But sometimes we'll say, oh, it's just my Enneagram number. It's just who I am. You just have to be accepting of that. That's, the giggles make you know, like, that's not good, right? The Enneagram is meant to say, yes, this is who you are, and this is how you're weak. This is how you're strong. That doesn't mean that you just kind of ride the train of, like, it identifying who you are. It is good for you to... Look at the things that um, look at these things and say, "All right, here's some areas where I can grow. Here's some areas that I can strengthen up." But don't we sometimes just say, "It's just who I am. It's just what I do." You just have to be okay with that. The power over self. Um, it, it it seems like when we just think about it, like it it seems like it should not be a difficult thing, right? Like. Um, but in fact, I, I think that it's really one of the most difficult things for us to reckon with. Um, do, do we have any Jerry Seinfeld fans down here? Like, you can re be proud. It, the two of you. Like the show. The show? Seinfeld? Okay, who likes the show, Seinfeld? Okay, there's a, it's, it's a difference. All right. So Seinfeld, he would always, he would often, when he was um, talking, and, you know, he'd have those little, like, stand-up acts. I guess it was supposed to be him kind of, like, introducing the show or him, like, you know, giving one of his comedic shows. Anyway, he would often start a bit with, uh, the thing about blank is, and then he'd kind of fill, fill in that blank. And then he would talk about how it's like an oxymoron or something. Well, in light of that, I think the thing about a lack of self-control is that we end up being too focused on 
ourselves. We we put more attention on how we feel, who we are, what's going on with us, what 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 about us? Um, how do I do this? Me me me. Like we we end up putting ourselves like the focus on ourselves. And it, and, it, and again, in a lot of ways, it seems to make sense because we're talking about self-control, controlling ourselves, having power over ourselves. And it's kind of true. I mean, wherever we are, whatever we do, no matter who we interact with, we are there, right? We are there. And I'm not trying to be weird about this, but um, we are everywhere that we go, so it is natural for us to first consider ourselves and what's happening and what we do. We're putting ourselves in every scenario because we're, like, that's what we are. It seems so obvious. I know. You're like, why is he talking about this? But this morning, what I want to do is take a, a moment, well, a few moments here, and look at one of my all-time favorite passages in the Bible, uh, and it comes from Romans 12. And um, I've... This passage, uh, I won't go into this too far because it kind of doesn't matter to y'all probably, but like this was one of the first larger passages that I had memorized back in college. And uh, back then I was reading the New Living Translation, so that's what we're going to look at today. And if some of y'all aren't fans of that, that's okay. Um, But I just, I want to take a moment and I want to read through uh, a big chunk of this and then um, dive into some of the little bits here. So you can follow along here. It says this. It says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. It's it's talking about straight shooting right there. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given you. Just as our bodies have many parts and Each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophecy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. If your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you are a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift of showing kindness to others, do it gladly. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection. And take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy. But work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in your confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. I know one of our small groups, y'all been going through spiritual gifts. Have y'all talked about this passage yet? Not yet? It's okay. I mean, yeah, yeah, in general, right? Yeah, in general. Sorry, I put them on the spot here. This is such a good one, in my opinion, about spiritual gifts and the way that God is, has, has given us, each of us, the ability to do certain things well. I like to take a little walk through this. Uh, I'm not going to break down each bit of it. You could easily do a whole teaching series on this. Um, but I think uh, I, I want us to be able to think about it as an overview uh, where we have the opportunity to dive deeper. You, you have the opportunity to dive deeper in any of these pieces on your own. That's what we're going to look at. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, it's good from a teacher's perspective to take one small verse and really go deep with it. Sometimes I want to take a passage and do a broad overview and then give you opportunities. If something stands out to say, okay, let me, let me focus in here on my own. That's kind of what's going on here. 
<clears throat> so in, in this first part here, um, I, yeah, that one right there. I, um, I went, as I was kind of reading through this, I thought, you know, there's this one paragraph right here. There's so much here. And there's two different things I've done. I've, I've highlighted some of it, and then I've underlined something that was right after that. And I think that these things really kind of go hand in hand, and I wanted to be able to take a moment and kind of process through it. So I'm going to read this paragraph, this, this paragraph just one more time, and then talk about um, these couple of different things here. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Giving our bodies to God. Um, he says, what this does is this, um, this turns us into a living and holy sacrifice. Um, that, that is a, a living sacrifice. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Like people like, who, were, who were first reading this, they're like, sacrifice is something you kill. Like that's a dead thing. Like it's, it's done. Like it's, it's gone. But you're saying we are meant to be a living sacrifice. And so when what we do, what Paul is writing here, he's saying is that when we take time and we give our bodies to God, that we become people who are, we are offering ourselves up to him. That we are allowing space for him to move, to work, to breathe in us and to live uh, for his spirit to work through us in the world. There, there, is, a, there is a work that happens um, that is good that happens uh, when we offer our bodies to God. And he says, here's why you should do that, because God has done so much for each one of us. He says, because of all he has done for you. And all of this... Um, when we give our bodies to God, when we let them be a living and holy sacrifice, which means that we are set apart, um, that God is, uh, you, you, Scripture talks about how there's like um, at everyday average sort of utensils, and then there's like holy special utensils, ones that are set apart. Um, we are allowing oursel our, ourselves, our bodies, to be set apart, that God is going to do something amazing through us. But there's something about all of that that is the way that we truly worship God. We're here this morning. I imagine that you were here. I don't want to speak for everybody here. But I imagine that you came here this morning because you wanted to connect with people. You, it's, it's Sunday, and so you feel like this is the time, this is the space where I come and I worship with my friends or with your family. Um, this is a space where we recognize that um, God is here. Now, we know that God is everywhere at all times, but we recognize that God is here in this place, and he wants to speak to me. He wants to speak to us. Um, but we come here uh, to worship. We come here to honor God, to glorify him, to, to lift him up, to sing songs that remind us of God's story. Um, that's one of the things that Jamie was pointing out, like, this is your story, God. This is who you are. This is what you've done. But we also come here to worship. Well, this isn't the only place where we have to do that. This is, and we know this. Like We can do this, and we have the opportunities to do this at all times. Where we give ourselves over to God. Um, how do we do that? What are some ways that we can do that? And he says right here in verse 2, he says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. It'd be really easy to put that in there as an excuse, right, of, of one of those reasons of having a lack of self-control. We, well, this, is, this isn't just who I am, but this is the culture that I live in. And so this is just what, this is what my neighbors do. This is what we do. It, this, is, this is what my workplace environment is like. Um, it's, just, it's just how things are. And we write off our actions. We write off our thoughts and our deeds um, and we just kind of lump it in with everybody else and say, well, everybody else is kind of doing it. it. It might be okay. 
And we don't allow ourselves to be transformed. We don't allow ourselves to be uh, different. Being different, being set apart, is, it is difficult at times. It's not always hard. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's hard to be that person in a room, to stand up and say, I don't think I can do this because I don't feel like this is what God is calling me to do. Now, for some of you, that's not, a, that's not an issue. You like being that person. And for some of us, it might be easier to do that in a room of our peers than it is when we're by ourselves. To have a sense of the calling that God has put on our lives, to have a sense of who God says that we are, who he invites us to be, who he says that we are by his word, that we are his beloved children and that we are set apart for something good. Sometimes it's harder for us to do that when we're on our own because we don't have anybody to nudge us and say, hold up. This isn't what God has called us to do. This isn't what God has called you to do. Self-control in those moments can be harder. Here he says this, he says, but we should let God transform us into a new person by changing the way that we think. It'd be really easy to think that that starts right here, right? The way that we think in our brain, right? That's That's a good starting point. But I don't, That's not just where it starts. Remember we talked about the gut. We talked about that thing that God does here. This area right here, from our gut to our heart, this is really, I think, where that stuff starts, is that um, God wants to move in us right here. And that, in turn, when God changes our heart, that changes what we think. And when God moves in the way that we think, that changes what we do. And so if we want to be people who are having self-control, allowing the Spirit to guide us, that this would, be a, this, this would be evidence of the Spirit's work in us, that we allow God to do that work right in this space, in our gut and in our heart, because then that changes what happens up here and that changes what we do and how we act. So many times, anybody here ever asked the question, God, what do you want me to do? Yes, I want to, can you please, yes. Like, has anybody ever here said, I don't know what I should do, and it feels like a moment of desperation? Like, th- that is just, like, we, th- it is something, if you haven't had that yet, I don't want to, like, tell you it's coming, because maybe it doesn't. But, like, it happens to the vast majority of us, where we have these moments of, like, Lord, I don't know what you want me to do. But it says, Paul tells us right here, that when we, are allow, when we allow God to move in this space, which transforms to here, which transforms to out here, that we start to understand what God desires for our lives. We start to understand what his will for us is. And, we under, and, we, and it seems to make more sense how his will for us is good. And it is pleasing. And it is perfect. It's just such a good paragraph, right? I feel like it's so deep and it's so, there's so much that, you could, that we could all really go through deeper in this section. But there is a work that God wants to do in us when it comes to self-control. And, it, and, it, and so much of it, remember, is cultivate. It's us responding to the work that God is doing. And so we have to be like, when we feel the gut, when we feel what's happening in here, we have to be able to respond and say, yes. I hear you, Lord. I hear what you're saying. I hear how you're wanting, what you're wanting me to do in this moment. I want to respond and I want to move with you. Now, the reason that, or one of the things to remember about this whole passage in Romans 12 is that Paul doesn't talk about how this is just, um, he talks about spiritual gifting and all these sorts of things. He talks about, you know, everything that we just talked about here a second ago. But it's not just for us. Uh, there's something about this that affects the community, that is meant to be for the community. We, as individuals, we belong to one another. We need one another. We uh, should be able to cherish one another. Like, community is really important in the body. 
in, in, in the body of Christ. Each of us has the ability to do certain things well. And notice that each of the things that was listed, it's, it, none of them are self-serving. They're all meant to be for somebody else. They're all meant to be for the community. And so I want to skip ahead to um, verse 9. It says this. <clears throat> it says, don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope, in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help. Always be eager to practice hospitality. He goes on further in this chapter, but I'm not going to go and continue to read all that. But it's... I've just genuinely appreciated uh, this chapter in my life, and I hope that here this morning, maybe it speaks to you in a way that makes sense. That's something about um, how we act, how we um, work against our desire and our, uh, the felt need that we have to indulge, that God speaks to our gut. Um, and, and you... Um, uh, I have a friend who's a nutritionist, and she often would talk about how you can train your gut, right? And, and oftentimes this would come from um, running um, in, in athletes. So I, I used to, I feel like I should say it like this. I used to run ultra marathons. I haven't run one in a long time, but this is like, you know, 30 miles. And uh, one of the h- hardest things to learn at first, it's not like running a road marathon where every now and then you pop one of those little goo gels, um, in an ultra marathon, you really got to eat like food, food. And so we, at our aid stations, we would have pizza and cookies and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and apples and like uh, just quesadillas. I mean, it's stuff like actual food and it's all junk food, most of it. <clears throat> and, uh, it but your body doesn't care at that point because it's just fuel for the fire. And my nutritionist friend would tell you opposite. She was like, no, you actually have to think about what you put in there. But I'm just like, whatever, just get it in the tank. Um, I'll share another story another time. I'm not going to do that right now. But um, anyway, but what she would talk about is how you can train your gut. It is hard to learn how to eat, but you can make yourself do that while you run. Like, don't stop and eat. Like, you run and eat at the same time. We can train our gut um, to listen to listen to the Holy Spirit, to listen to what God is saying, to to how he's guiding us, so that we're indulging less and then less and then less, and so so that we get to the point we are able to say, I am submitting myself to the Lord. I am giving myself to who he says I am. I am listening to him and being guided by him, and I am following as well as I can. We will never get it right all the time. It's just the reality that we live in. But we can work towards it, and we ought to, because that is who God invites us to be. Now, wrapping up this series here this morning, um, I think that this passage in Romans 12 really speaks to the aim that we've had. God wants to do a good work in us by way of the Holy Spirit. Um, Part of our discipleship, which is us becoming more like Jesus, is allowing him, is us allowing him to be more present in our lives. A first step for us is to see what Paul is doing here, and that is to let ourselves be living sacrifices, that we are giving ourselves over to who God invites us to be, that we give ourselves to him and say, I I am submitting myself to you in this moment. These things, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, all these things, like um, some of them come easier to you than others. Some, they might feel downright difficult or impossible at times. But God not only wants to see these things in us, but he wants, he invites us to be a part of the process of bearing this fruit. That's what cultivate is. And I want to end on um, uh, a couple verses here from Hebrews chapter 12. I don't, yeah, I think we do have a slide for this, but, um, but it says this. It says, therefore, Since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. 
And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. In these moments, we're uh, responding to the Spirit's work in our lives. In these moments where it's hard, because we'll run up against that. In these moments where it's difficult, there's something about us taking our, our, and fixing our eyes on Jesus. When we are able, doing this, where we take a moment to say, Jesus, I don't feel like I completely see you right now, but I know that you're with me. So we're, we're, we're kind of acting out in truth what we know to be true. God, I'm having a hard time in this moment, but I know that you're here. I know that you see me and I know that you're good because your word says it. Would you just help me to see you more in this moment? So when we fix our eyes on Jesus, good things can happen. Let's pray. <coughs> Jesus, we, we fix our eyes on you. In this moment, we see you. We know that you are here. We know that you are good. And we confess that there are times where um, indulging feels right. Indulging feels good. Indulging feels fun. And we don't want to be people who are um, allowing you to cultivate and for us to be responding well in, in self-control. All of these fruits, Lord, are things that you have said that you can, like, we, we can have them in us uh, because of your spirit, because of the, uh, the great work that you do in us. We want to be people that respond to you. Um, God, I'm thankful for these nine weeks that we've been talking about this. As we go about the rest of our days um, here today, this week, this month, this year, um, would you remind us of uh, who you are? Um, Holy Spirit, uh, the work that you do in us is um, sometimes it, it, it feels like, uh, <laughs> sometimes, Holy Spirit, I feel like you're just kind of grinding away in my heart and really trying to, 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 to tear me down for the sake of, of healing me and, and building me back up. It's like resetting a bone. But it's not always like that. Other times it feels like you are, um, I, I'm just kind of riding, <laughs> riding the wind, as it were. Um, no matter which way we feel it, Lord, uh, uh, Holy Spirit, we want to we respond. Uh, we want to continually see you and move with you. We love you. We pray this in your name. Amen.